<laughs> we had um about a hundred people register for the class. So we'll see how many people actually <laughs> we'll see how many people actually join us. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody i see you rolling in um this is t with keep growing detroit and i'm here with uh, mama hanifa we'll give people maybe three minutes just to kind of get situated with their computers three to five minutes and we'll jump right into our our lesson today hope all everybody is well um hey mike I see you in the chat room. Do you see the chat uh, box, Mama Hanifa? I do indeed. Okay. Uh, while people are rolling in, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about about who you are for folks who, who don't know? Peace, Brianna. Sure. Greetings, everyone. I'm Mama Hanifa Juman from the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network. Uh, I'm a founding member of DBCFSN and I serve in the capacity of education and outreach director, as well as the coordinator for our youth program, Food Warriors Youth Development Program. With our Food Warriors program, I teach young people primarily between the ages of five and 12, urban gardening uh, and health and nutrition education and everything that the young people learn in the food, food Warriors program is grounded in those traditional African values that most of us um, know as the Nguzo Saba, okay? Um, so right now, of course, while we're in this COVID-19 pandemic, the children are not uh, participating in the Food Warriors program, but the two uh, youth gardens are still being maintained. We have two programs. One of our Food Warriors programs is an after-school program at the former Timbuktu Academy of Science and Technology, which is now the Barack Obama Leadership Academy, which is located on Detroit's east side on East Canfield. The second location is a Saturday community program located at my church, the Shrines of the Black Madonna, which is located on the west side at 7625 Linwood Avenue. So right now, um, the gardens are being maintained. They are really beautiful and flourishing. And we had a bumper crop of cucumbers this year. At one point, I was in the kitchen canning bread and butter pickles probably two to three times a week. Um, my assistant and I, Bibi Jamila, we have taken the herbs that we're growing in the Food Warriors gardens um, and we have made herbal teas as well as package some of the herbs, the thyme and the sage, and we'll be sending care packages to our Food Warriors families. Um, some of the parents have also come to our West Side Food Warriors site and picked up their own jars of bread and butter pickles. But there are still lots of pickles available so if you're interested, let me know. You can come by the shrine any Saturday between 11 and one o'clock and pick up a jar or two of bread and butter pickles. <laughs> uh oh, you're gonna have a yeah, a bunch of people at your door. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm just dropping in the uh, chat box the recipe that you're using tonight. Okay. And then I have a few handouts that you used last year mm -hmm. that um, what I'll do is I'll email them to people because they are Word documents. Okay. Um, if, if I can do it before we get off the line, I can, um, maybe I can make them Google Docs or put them in the chat. But um, mm -hmm. if not, I will, um, I will email the participants. So we have a good number of people with us today. Um, we decided to um, 
do a video of Mama Hanifa in the kitchen, in her own personal kitchen, <laughs> making the, the bread and butter, just in case we had little technical issues with the with the with the recording in real time. So we have a video. Uh, we're gonna play it and we're gonna talk through it. And then we have Mama Hanifa here to answer questions while she's going through it. So if you have questions, um, if you have questions now about canning, let's before we get started, let's just see if you can tell me if you're if you found the chat box, if you're new to Zoom. Probably all of us have been on Zoom since the last three months. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody that's new to Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are, there's a little button that says chat. Uh, find the chat box and just let me know, are you brand new to canning? Have you have you never canned anything before? Or are you have you done some canning and you're just here to learn a little bit more? I'm kind of curious who's in the room. If you want to just find that chat box and let me know, like, your, what's your level of experience? I'm really curious who's all in the room. And then, so we got brand new, new, new. Okay. Totally brand new. I see. I hear you shine. <laughs> oh, I love that canned with my grandma. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's where I learned how to can with my grandma. All right. Yep, yep. Oh, is that how you learn for real? Mm -hmm. yeah, oh. Experience with my grandma. <laughs> um, some canning, but not. Um, okay. Yeah. So we got. Yeah. You know, we got mostly. Uh, and then, hey, Nicola, you you found the chat box. Nice. Uh, some canning. Same. Okay. From the family. Okay, Betty, you've been canning for a while. So jump in and let us know if you have any pointers that you want people to know if you've been canning for a while already. Um, Brenda, you made some salsa last week. Go ahead with your bad self. I'll be on my way with some chips later. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, Kahimba, you, you kind of knew can with grandma, need to learn some more. I mean, canning is one of those things where I feel like you always use a, a refresher. And yeah. there's some, um, before we get, is there anything you want to say? I know there's some, when I think about canning, I know there's like things like botulism and things like that. Hang on, is my light crazy in behind me? All right. Yeah. <laughs> and I do um, touch on that in the video as I'm going through the process. Okay. Yeah, that's that's important. That's my scariest thing. <laughs> I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> but I do have some banging tomato sauces that I really want to try to can up for the winter. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be all ears myself. All right, okay. thanks for that little exercise. I see we have a lot of newbies. So let's get started and use that chat box if you have any questions along the way. I'll just kind of weave them into the into the video. Um, give me two seconds to share my screen and right now you're seeing my whole <laughs> email <laughs> sorry <laughs> all right there she is Good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Can you all see My that? My name is Mama Hanifa okay. Ajuman. And on behalf of Keep Growing Detroit, I'd like to Pull up this chat thank you me. all for being here at our Canning 101 class. This afternoon, we will be canning bread and butter pickles. I have um, already um, prepared the cucumbers, so what we have to do now is we have four pounds of cucumbers and what we need to do is rinse the cucumbers because they have been sitting in um, salt and the salt helps to draw out the moisture in the cucumbers. So we want to rinse the cucumbers and the onions in cold water. Rinse these really well to get all of the salt out. Okay, for some reason I can't see you, Mama Hanifa, but was there a particular kind of salt you were using with that? Uh, yes. Yeah. Can you salt, either canning salt or cooking salt? Okay. 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 
Okay, thanks guys for letting me know. The reason you that I here. prep Good. the cucumbers and the onions um, beforehand is because the cucumbers and the onions need to um, they need to kind of sit in that salt for at least an hour and a half. Some recipes even um, even encourage you to let the cucumbers and the onions sit overnight. But generally it's between an hour um, to overnight. And so these have been sitting for a couple of hours and we want to rinse them off really well. Looks like I might have to um, do it in two batches because my colander is like every little shake, little shake, shake. also helps to keep your cucumbers crisp. So that it draws the water, the moisture. And it also helps to keep the cucumbers crisp. Because sometimes the crispy is a hit or miss with me. Um, I've made batches of pickles where the cucumbers were crisp and sometimes they were a little uh, little mushy but they were still good um, and one of the things though is you should always make sure that your cucumbers are, are firm um, you don't want to use cucumbers that are can the fresher the cucumbers are, the firmer they'll be. You don't want to use cucumbers that have been sitting around for a week, four or five days. You want to use fresh picked cucumbers. Uh -huh. And that will help to ensure that your pickles will be nice and crispy. Okay, so I... I was just trying to answer the questions in the chat box as they came up. So I'm going to keep playing. But if you aren't finding your answer, go ahead and type it again. I um, did add the um, I did add the recipe again. So I saw a question on the quantity. Um, but uh, we'll try to get through the questions in the chat box. OK. Okay, that was um, four pounds. Okay. Four pounds. So we go ahead, Mama Honey, if you want to talk. Yeah, that was four pounds of cucumbers, um, and they were um, the smaller cucumbers. So you want to slice them about a quarter inch thick, and then you want to slice up um, your onions really thin, and yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Oops. The Ball Blue Book of Preserving, and this is uh, your canning Bible, okay? Lots of good information um, regarding canning, as well as wonderful, um, easy to follow recipes in the Ball Blue Book of Preserving. And I also like this book. Put them up. This is my second most favorite uh, canning book. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can, um, Ball also has a website. I think it's simply ball.com. Uh, if you don't want to purchase the book, you can always go on the website because there's lots of great information there. And a third resource is any, um, any university, um, um, extension office 
and Michigan State University has an extension office. Um, it has an extension website and you can go to their extension website again and get lots of uh, helpful information regarding canning, especially if you are a novice, if you are a beginning canner. Okay, Mama, there's a couple questions in here that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> so I want to uh, go ahead and ask them. Uh, there was a question about, um, there's a question about, does it matter if you cut them up in slices like that? Could you chuck, could you do spears like they do in the grocery store? Is that okay? Or you need, mm -hmm. that's fine. Yeah, and then Sonia was asking about, um, can you can dehydrated cucumbers? I've never, I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, so that's something that you would probably have to do some research on. I don't see why not, but again, I've never encountered uh, a dehydrated cucumber. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I've got to get uh, another bowl. So I'm going to step away. So we had um, we had tried to edit this out some certain things. <laughs> okay, and uh, had a little technology too. So we're, we're all family in the bowl so that I can now rip the remainder of the pickles, the, the cucumbers, and not pickles yet, the cucumbers and the onions. And although the, um, this class is pre-recorded, we will actually have um, an opportunity for questions, questions and answers during um, the scheduled time for the class on on Thursday. So if I'm forgetting something, because yes, if I forget something or you just have a burning question, um, you will be able to ask those questions on Thursday. Do another quick rinse. Mama told me to, to advance it a little bit. Tool um, has a dual purpose. Um, you what see was the, the name little, of that tool? Um, I um, too indentations. These are markers that you can't. You probably can't really see it, but these are markers that will um, help you to measure the head space or the um, the um, how how much ingredient you can feel the in in the jar um for example let me get okay let me get a jar excuse me okay so what this tool does it um it's a guide as to the capacity um, for the um, the capacity for the um, filling of the jar. So the first one is one quarter, and because I am familiar with the ridges on the jars, I pretty much know that this is the one uh, one quarter measurement. And as you can see when I put um, the tool inside the jar, it stops right at this ridge. So that tells me that this is how far I need to fill um, my jars. Some things, um, one quarter, 
then you have uh, one half okay you have one half and if you just go around that jar you can see that's one half then you have three quarters and you just continue to go around the jar and the last one is one inch okay and this is the one inch mark okay but um usually with um jams jellies pickles the the um recommended head space uh or jar filling point is one quarter inch one quarter inch from the top of the jar okay so we have our debubbler we have our jar lifter and of course this is our funnel this is what we use to uh, put our ingredients inside the jars and this is just our measuring cup and i think those are yeah those are all of the tools um let's see there's also uh, i didn't see it earlier so i'm Okay. Well, there's another um, there's another tool or utensil that we use, and it's a magnet to lift the um, the lids and place the lids on top of the jars. But since the water isn't hot, 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 I don't necessarily need um, the uh, magnetic lid lifter. But that's the other utensil, and if again you are a beginning canner you can purchase uh, a canning kit at most of the big box stores and um, at any hardware store and this is called a, a water bath canner there are two types of canning there's water bath canning and then there's pressure canning pressure water bath canning is for high acid foods and um, those are generally your your fruits when you get into um when you get into vegetable canning meat canning sauces that have meats you will need a pressure canner because with your hot uh your hot water bath canner um the temperature get the highest the temperature gets is 212 degrees but to safely can low acid foods, the temperature needs to be 240 degrees in order to kill the spores that uh, come from the botulism bacteria. Okay, so we won't be doing any, um, we won't be doing any pressure canning because, um, the cucumbers the uh they don't require um 240 degrees hot water bath canning will can the cucumbers safely okay um and also sometimes people um have asked um why do we have to have sugar there are some canning uh, recipes that you can uh, use for jams and jellies that don't require sugar. But one of the reasons that we use sugar is not only for um, not only for flavor, but sugar is also a preserv a preservative, and so sugar helps to inhibit the growth the growth of microbes in your um, in your foods so that's an important um, aspect not only because it adds flavor but it also destroys um, my, any microbes that might um, that might be in your uh, recipe or in your canning okay yeah, I didn't know that either. I'm just gonna pause for one second for the question that was in the chat box. Did you, uh, did you see that question? Hang on, I'm popping it, pop it up. Right if you here. use the pressure 
canning system on fruits, veggies that only need the bath? Or is it better to have both systems? I'm not really sure what what this person means when uh -huh. he says pressure canning system on fruits, veggies. So okay, all right, Mike. If you want to uh, maybe clarify what you were saying there, um, okay. And then did you want me to fast forward a little bit? You still. Oh, okay. Okay. I see what he said. You know what? Um, I'm not sure if um, probably what it would do would be to, um, I'm thinking if you would use the, and this is just my, my thought. Okay. Uh -huh. if you would use a pressure canner to can the cucumbers to make the pickles it might rob them of some of the flavor because mm. it's um, almost double, you know, the well, not double the heat, but the heat is more intense um, and it's under pressure. But um, that's something I really hadn't thought about. Now, but one of the things is there are some things that would require require you to can them in a pressure canner um, that you could also use the water bath canning process. Um, for example, I do zucchini relish. Well, zucchini normally would have to be canned in a pressure canner if you are just uh, preserving the zucchini but because it's a relish and it has vinegar and the vinegar increases the acidity in the um in the in the um zucchini then it's safe to can in a water bath canner but mm. if i was just say for instance if i was just cutting up the zucchini and processing it in water you would definitely have to use the hot, uh, I'm sorry, the pressure canning method. Okay, I'm glad you clarified that because. So if, if it has a vinegar base, same with um, tomatoes. Tomatoes are kind of at that, um, that um, norm range of acidity. Um, and so some things would require you to pressure can them, uh -huh. but can, um, if you're using um, vinegar or lemon juice, lemon juice, citrus juice also increases the acidity in the food that you're canning. So it kind oh, okay. of on, it, it, it depends on what you're using, um, the, um, yeah, what recipe um, the fruit or the vegetable is that will determine whether you need to pressure or water bath can it. Okay. Yeah, you know, I've seen recipes where they say add the lemon juice, and I'm always like, why would you add lemon juice and, and blueberry jam, you know, or <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I got you. Any uh, any other okay. questions be before we get going again? We'll uh, keep going. And then, did you want me to fast? Thanks for that. Yeah, fast forward. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. You say yeah. fast forward a little bit or start from here? Fast forward. Okay. All right. All right. Going a little bit. Let's see where and we're at. Going over the recipe. So. Okay. That might be good, huh? You already. Okay. Oh, you want to Okay. Difficult to find pint-sized canning jars, pickling um, salt. So I didn't, I ran out of pickling salt. Um, so I used kosher salt. Um, and that kosher salt is fine. It's just um, the crystals are just larger with the kosher salt. But you don't want to use uh regular table salt because it has iodine and anti-caking agents and you don't want any of that you just want pure um pure salt so again canning or kosher 
um, two cups of sugar, two tablespoons, mustard seed. This is our mustard seed. Two teaspoons celery seed. This is our celery seed. Um, two teaspoons turmeric. One teaspoon peppercorns. Um, I know the label says black peppercorns, but the last time I purchased peppercorns, I decided um, that I wanted to use the the colorful peppercorns, so I got the multicolored peppercorns. Um, let's see. Uh, a teaspoon of ground ginger. And again, vinegar. Now you can use, I, I prefer apple cider vinegar in my canning, but you can use white um, distilled vinegar as well. It's just, you know, it's, it's your preference. The only thing you have to make sure of is that you are using vinegar that it has 5% acidity mm. okay that's the most important thing the vinegar has to be five percent acidity okay and that's three cups so we'll start with our two cup measuring cup i was wondering that too where did you buy your uh bulk spices mama got it going on over there so that's two cups we're gonna Add it to the pot, then an additional cup. Here, I'll add the recipe back to so Nakaya here. was going to become a YouTube rock star, so y'all can tell me how I'm doing. And I want to shout out to my videographer. <laughs> so that's three cups apple cider vinegar um, and then we want two cups and I'll get another um, measuring cup if you're in the chat box you should be able to copy and paste that um, that recipe you should yeah, drop the in sugar there. in first so that my measuring cup and uh, um, I'll include that recipe in the email wet. that I send I'll send that out, an email out to you probably tomorrow um, with the recipe and a few canning highlights that we had put together. Right, so we've got our two cups and I always use organic sugar. Okay, so that's two cups of sugar, two tablespoons, yellow mustard seed so I'll do that over the pot just in case okay so that's one tablespoon two tablespoons yellow mustard seed uh, two teaspoons celery seed okay yep, that's two, yep, two teaspoons celery seed that's one teaspoon. Two teaspoons. Okay, two teaspoons turmeric. That's one. Oh no. Oops. And see, that's why it's always important to read the labels. I got all excited. This is ground ginger. So it calls for one teaspoon ground ginger. So we have a one teaspoon ground ginger. But let that be a lesson. Okay. This is turmeric. So we want two teaspoons of turmeric. Okay, one and two. And let's see. Last but not least, we have one teaspoon peppercorns. Okay. Woo. 
boy. The peppercorns are strong. Okay, so we have everything for our brine. And I'll get a spoon. And turn this on because what we want to do is we want to bring the brine to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we will add our cucumbers and onions. Mm, mm, mm. Now, that's starting to look good. Do you sell any? We'll oh, yeah, that. you sell your jams. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll let that simmer, come to a boil. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. See how much water has drained? Yeah. So. Okay. All right, she said push it up a little bit. All right, how's that? Is um, you can add um, a Granny Smith apple or um, sometimes it'll call for lime to increase the amount of pectin and help to bring it to that gel stage. But I, I haven't had a problem. My, my jams and jellies, they generally gel pretty well. Without the use of pectins. I feel like I'm at my auntie's kitchen. <laughs> and I'm uh and I'm working with you. So we'll just let that simmer for a moment or two or ten. My videographer is filling in some of the <laughs> some of our blank spots, <laughs> some of our voids. Um, I'll go ahead and and mute while you're boiling that. And then there was like a question from Priscilla in there around um, um, adjusting the vinegar recipe for jalapenos. Okay, this is um, this is the advice that I give all beginning canners. Well, not just beginning canners, just canners in general. Before you attempt to adjust any recipe, or better stated, don't make any adjustments to a recipe. Either use um, one of the accredited canning books or go to an accredited website of, um, and find a recipe that you are looking for. There are tons and tons of recipes on the uh, um, extension sites. Again, ball canning has a website, but you don't want to make adjustments to recipes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, that's a no-no. Because -no. <laughs> you, you want to get that right vinegar. And, uh, and you want to make sure that it is precise and you have the correct ratio of vinegar, of sugar, to whatever um, it is that you are canning so that you can ensure that your product is safe. Mm -hmm. Priscilla, that was a great question because, you know, when I'm cooking, I tend to just, you know, a sprinkle of this, a sprinkle of that. 
But with canning is a whole different ballpark, is exactly. what you're saying. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Advance. Advance a little. Okay. So I see you just adding in your your pickles, stirring it up. I mean your cucumbers. Mm -hmm. You're not yet pickles. <laughs> Looking good. And Nikaya, uh, that's uh, Mama Hanifa's granddaughter. She did the videography for this. <laughs> she did really good. Here we go. Yeah. Growing the garden as well as putting the flowers in our salads because calendula is an edible flower. They have also made herbal teas and they learn what those um, health benefits are in the herbs that we're growing in our garden. Unfortunately, because we're in this COVID pandemic, we have not been, um, the children have not been working in the gardens, but the gardens are still being maintained by myself and uh, our food warriors assistant, uh, BB Jamila. So what we have done is we've taken the herbs that we're growing in the garden, the calendula, the chamomile, and the lavender, and we've created a wonderful herbal tea. We've also dried um, and packaged up um, some of the herbs, the um, thyme, excuse me, the thyme and the sage, and we're gonna send care packages to all of our food warriors families, along with a brochure um, that explains what the particular herb is, what, it, what its um, health benefits are, and also some of the properties of those herbs. So we will be doing that. We have... Um, about how long are you are you letting this kind of cook up? About ten minutes. Okay. Okay. About ten minutes. So you can advance. Okay. Yeah. I see you're talking about your food. I know you missed the babies. I oh my god, <laughs> I do indeed. And um, that's uh, that might be how we met. It well, is. We might we might have known each other before that some kind of way, but. When your, baby, in, when your babies were at in Sodoma. Yeah. Joshua was one of my first full worries. As a matter of fact, Joshua and Nakaya are probably the only two who went from beginning all the way through middle school. In Aww. Warriors program because even when Joshua was in middle school at Timbuktu, he was the only middle schooler that would participate in Food Warriors. The other <laughs> thought it was for babies, but uh, Joshua participated all the way until eight, the end of his eighth grade. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so when you get that Some kit that you were talking about, it's going to have all of these little uh, tools that you have. Exactly. You can, um, like I said, you can uh, purchase a beginner's kit at any of the big box stores or at a hardware store and it will come with a hot water bath canner as well as uh, all of those tools. Okay so while while your cucumbers were kind of getting saucy there <laughs> you uh you were um because we fast forwarded a little bit you guys okay. because we tried to edit it down and it was taking too long to process. So we said, we'll just walk through it. You know, we're all family and we're all figuring out this um, technology piece. But so the. Um, you want to um, you want to sterilize your jars mm -hmm. and so your jar should be um, simmering in that hot water bath canner while you're preparing um, while you're preparing your recipe. Okay. Yeah. So, and then is there a certain time that you have them simmering or no? About 10 minutes. They okay. About 10 minutes. Um, but you don't want them to start boiling. You just want them, um, the water to get hot. So yeah, about, and it takes about 
10 minutes um, usually um, for you to get your recipe actually at the point it needs to be before you start filling your jars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you just do the jars. Do you sanitize the lids too or no? You know I know what? it sounds like a crazy question, but <laughs> nothing is a crazy question as it relates to canning. What <laughs> is you want to wash your jars, your lids, and your bands in hot water. Previously, you would also um, have your lids and your bands in with your jars, mm -hmm. but um, Ball has now um, revised their um, recommendations. And so before it was 12 months, it, the recommended shelf time was 12 months, it's been mm -hmm. extended to 18 months. The um, lids and the bands are no longer recommended to um, be sterilized or in the hot water. They, I guess, with the improvement of the sealant on the lids, because that was one of the reasons you wanted to kind of get that uh, sealant around the lids pliable. But now you don't, it's, it's not recommended that you do that. So what I do is I still just put mine in a pot with hot water in it, but I don't actually submerge them in the uh, pot with the, um, with the jars anymore. So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of, you know, it's kind of up to you, but you definitely want to wash them um, in hot uh, soapy water. Uh-huh, uh-huh, you know, okay. Yeah. And you can reuse the jar, the lids. Another yes. crazy question, no. but okay. No, 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 no. You cannot reuse the lids. You okay. can use the screw bands. The the lids are one time use only. Okay? Uh -huh. I repeat, you cannot reuse the <laughs> but you can reuse the screw band. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know I had heard something like that, but then yeah. it seems like you're going through a lot of lids and I know you can purchase the lids separately. So that's, yeah, you can. that's kind of but, um, what I have uh, found in the last month or so, it's really, really hard to find the pint size jars because the pint size are like the standard size and it's get everybody's canning now. Everybody's preserving now. Uh -huh. so it's really difficult to find uh, the pint size canning jars and the regular mouth lids. Um, the canning jars come in two, um, the mouth of the jars come in two different sizes. You have the regular mouth and you have the wide mouth. Um, regular mouth hard to find the lids. I was able to go online and find them at Amazon. Um, I was at the Target um, on 12 Mile and John R. Uh, and they had two uh, cases of pint size jars and I snapped them both up. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, had yeah. been for, I had been looking for like a week and wasn't able to find them in um, my neighborhood hardware store right here on the Cadillac um, hardware store on Trumbull, which is walking distance from my house. They didn't know when they were going to get any more in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and this it, has everything kind of slowed up. Yeah, and it's only going to get it's only going to get worse because we're at the end of the harvest season. So yeah. if you're thinking yeah. about, and I'm just saying that to say, if you're thinking about canning, you need to get your supplies ASAP. ASAP. Right now. Like mm -hmm. I said, I was able to find some jars at um, the Target, but I just lucked up on those. But I checked Amazon and they did still have them in stock um, on Amazon. So I'm getting ready to get about six um, six cases 
um, in the next week or so because yeah, once um, once the fall, well, we're almost into the fall and you're not going to be able to find them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll tell you something while, while you're doing this. Oh, so this is the part where you're me- using that measuring tool to see how far you didn't, um, <laughs> you are from the top. Yeah, well, you know what? Because I know the uh, markings on the band, I don't, I don't have to use the tool anymore, but I just uh-huh. want people to see um, you know, how to use the debubbler because it is one of the tools that come um, in your uh, in your pack. But once you, you know, once you start it to can, you'll be able to distinguish the quarter from the half to the uh, inch mark on, mm. yeah, on your jars. And that look good too. most of the things that, um, most of the things that I can, my jams, my jellies, and my pickles, they require a quarter, quarter inch head space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you a story while you're fill- filling those up. And Brenda said they got the pint size at blocks. So just so you know. What is that? Um, Where's blocks, Brenda? I don't know, but um, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you the story while Brenda's answering that. I so uh for some reason so so y'all know my uh Hanifa knows all my children because they were in her garden program, <laughs> and at any rate, Bina for some reason got to worrying about food security, food uh, shortages. She's she's <laughs> like, Mama, we gonna have food shortage. She like she's like literally concerned about this. Okay. And and then Anisa, so she's talking to Anisa about it, and Anisa says, "Bina, you tripping? Mama got that big old garden in the back. We straight." <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I had I, I I mean I'm overhearing them talking like this, and it was it, and it was so funny. And I said, "Well, you know, my garden is big, but you know it ain't gonna take all of us through the whole <laughs> through the whole winter, you know." <laughs> but um, just the fact that they were thinking about that, yeah. and uh, you know, I attribute that uh, a lot to you as well, and, and your works with them. So, Thank so funny. You. And and what? But what's really awesome is uh, I mentioned um, my food warriors assistant earlier, BB Jamila. Jamila mm-hmm. was uh, my middle school student at uh, in Sorma. And I had Jamila from sixth grade to eighth grade. And it was so interesting because she told me, she said, Mama Hanifa, I know you thought I wasn't listening, but I really was. Mm -hmm. Because with those middle schoolers, most of them, you had to take them to the garden kicking and screaming they did <laughs> the little ones oh they loved it but the uh, middle schoolers they got too cool for it yeah exactly initially <laughs> they didn't want to have any parts of it but i have two former students who i know well actually three who i know are actively engaged um in the food system as a career uh, Zanaya is at Michigan State University. Uh, I think her major is nutrition. Um, Masai is a vegan chef. He, mm. um, yeah, he he is now with um, the Pistons as one of uh, their chefs. Okay. And, yeah, and Jamila who again is my assistant and she's also a part of the D-Town farm staff. So yeah, when I when I think about this work and it's really funny because um, I just had my 65th birthday in April and, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes, um, you know, I'll get that question, Mama Hanifa, when are you going to retire? I'm like, you don't retire from this kind of work. You don't have- <laughs> When you're doing the things that you love, you don't think about it in those terms. But then I also think even if I did decide to retire, I can see the fruits of our labor. That's right. And all of this began with the work that we were doing at a small African-centered academy um, in Sodoma Institute. 
because food security was always an integral part of the school's curriculum. And no matter what um, discipline you taught, one lesson plan a week had to be based um, on um, the food system. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. but seeing oh, my- Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, seeing- mm -hmm young people actually being engaged in this work as their life careers it, yeah it lets very me rewarding full circle yeah yeah so that okay so that recipe made well we got six jars there oh, coming up five. we got we got five jars and it's really interesting because normally i only get four pints but I got five pints. I would have had six pints, but I only uh, processed five jars because I, I wasn't expecting to get um, that much. But I think it was because the cucumbers were smaller. Ah, okay, okay. And it's funny because while you were kind of, you kind of cooking them down, I'm like, is that gonna make the cucumbers too soft? You know what I'm saying? But but it do, it doesn't no no and again um it you know i've i've had hit or miss success with the cucumbers some of them are, are firm and you know crispy um others you know they're a little soft i just either put them on burgers or chop them up and use it like relish mm -hmm. yeah. okay and, and i see you're kind of mixing it up one of the uh, things that I also learned as I was um, researching, okay, you know, what is it that I can do to make sure that my um, my cucumber, my pickles are always crisp? Uh huh. So uh -huh. I found out also that the blossom end of the cucumber it has some type of enzyme in it that will make your cucumbers mushy. So you are, but I never put the ends, I always cut both ends of the cucumber off and discard it. I never, um, you know, use that in the recipe. I also found out that, um, that it depends, it, part of the determination also is how long the cucumbers have uh, been picked to the time you process them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As I was saying earlier, the fresher the cucumbers are, the uh, higher your success is for your cucumbers to not be soft and mushy. And you know, you can use, um, um, mm, they call it pickle crisp, but I don't, I don't use any of those things. Like I was saying earlier, even in my jams and jellies, I don't use uh, store-bought pectin. I just use, the, allow the natural pectin of the fruit to um, gel my jams and jellies. It takes a little longer, but it's okay. 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 And is there, is there something about the pectin that is like a chemical that you don't like or? Um, is this... it, because though they always have some additives in them, you know, the ones that you purchase in the store. Keto last year told me about um, a pectin that you could purchase that didn't have, it was an, an all natural pectin that didn't have any additives in it, but I haven't used it. Like I said, um, I just make sure that I add um, most of the recipes. If you don't use um, the store-bought pectin, then you can use a Granny Smith apple because it has a lot of pectin, natural pectin in it, and it will have the same effect. Okay, okay. All right, and then I'll fast forward it to the next part, but then you had a couple questions we could get to while you're still packing okay. these jars. Um, so I was kind of wondering that too, Priscilla, like the ratio of cucumber to juice, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, 
Priscilla's asking, should you pack the cukes in the in the jar? Well, you yeah, you do want to um you do want to fill the jars pretty tightly, but you also want to make sure that you have enough space for the liquid. And um as you can um see, or maybe um maybe I haven't gotten to that part yet with the debubbler once you have filled your jars you want to take that debubbler and go around the sides of the jars to release any air bubbles that might be trapped in the jar oh that's what you're doing okay uh -huh. yeah. yeah with the debubbler that's what yeah oh right. that's why it's called a debubbler okay <laughs> you want to go around and make sure you're releasing any air bubbles that might be trapped. Okay, my mind, I'm like, why is the measurement tool called a debubbler? But I got you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and then Nicola was asking, uh, could you use um, midget cucumbers whole for the recipe? You can. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And usually um, uh, mid the midget cucumbers are used for um they call them uh gherkins they're sweet pickles and they're similar they're similar to bread and butter pickles but yeah you can use um you can use those whole okay all right you can, yeah um spear them chunk them okay and then you're are you cleaning around the rim for like yes. a safety thing or is this just like you just thing that you want to clean around the rims is because you want to make sure that there is no liquid on that rim or um some of the uh pickles or or the onions or something stuck on that rim because anything that comes into contact between the rim and that lid will cause the lid to not seal properly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, and there have been there have been occasions when I have uh, processed my um, my canning and they did not seal. It's not. A total loss. Well, it's not, it's actually not a loss. If for whatever reason your jar doesn't seal, you have two options. One is you can reprocess it. The second option is you can just, once it cools, just put it in the refrigerator. I've done that with my pickles. Uh, those pickles will last in the refrigerator three or four months. I'm sorry, not months, weeks. Okay, excuse me. Okay, okay. Last, yeah, three or four weeks. Uh, mm -hmm. I've never reprocessed the pickles because, again, um, that to me would just make them mushy. Um, but mm -hmm. I have reprocessed um, jams and jellies. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay, I heard a crazy thing today. Uh huh. What's that? Uh, somebody told me they use their dishwasher for their hot water baths. Oh, okay. Yeah. You heard of such a thing? No, never. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe, <laughs> maybe I could get away with this easy. No. <laughs> and he, and you also want to make sure that your um, jars are completely submerged in the water. I'm actually taking a little of the water off because I had um, too much in there. And when when your pot is at a rolling boil like that, yeah. and the lid is all the way on, it will uh, boil over. Yeah. Now okay, so then how long are you, are you boiling uh, those? The process time is 10 minutes. Okay. Yep. Everything is 10 minutes. Seems uh like. well depending on the recipe. Most okay. jams, jellies, pickles, relishes, yeah, that it's a standard 10 minutes. Pickle beets half an hour. 
So um, again, you know, it, it depends on the recipe and the uh, type of food that you are processing. And then when we get into um, your pressure canning, that's a whole nother ball game. So oh, uh, okay. next, next year, our canning class will be uh, pressure canning. One. Do you have a pressure canner? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So, but um, are those expensive or? They are. Yeah. Uh huh. That's what I thought. Uh huh. The canners are more expensive than your, um, you know, hot water bath canners. But I, I am learning the pressure canning process. I have not at this point pressure canned anything. Mm -hmm. I am going to learn. <laughs> oh, so, it'd be cool if we did like a pressure canning co-op or something. So yeah. everybody don't have to buy the, the, the equipment. Oh, that would, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would, um, be, that would be great. Like a maybe if, if we can get in person. <laughs> Right when we're able to come back, yeah. Um, yeah. and then we uh we all get together and can our stuff together. That'd be cool. A canning party, yeah. A canning party, yep, yep. I remember my grandmother. Well, my grandmothers used to do that uh, because my great grandmother lived next door, and that's what they would do. Um, the elders would get together. And they would they would have canning parties, and like I say, that's the way I learned from my grand watching my grandma, my great <laughs> yeah. Oh, and now she, and now Nakai is learning from her grandma. Look at that <laughs> full circle. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was I gonna say? Are you should I keep going because you're gonna pull them out of here? Is something we should know about pulling them out? Um. Yeah, I am gonna um pull them out um shortly you can probably advance a little bit more okay because we're almost at the end i'm just washing up the dishes now <laughs> okay and you know what i saw nakaya plugging the uh the volunteer hours at, at deep town i saw her yeah plugging yeah. that yeah right, should i go ahead and unmute and you can do you want to talk this through or you want to talk it out live what you're doing here Oh, okay. You can um you can unmute. Okay. I see you're yeah. still waiting a little bit, but it looked like we don't have too much time. And then um we can get to any final questions. And so when you um take your jars out, you always wanna listen for that ping. When did when did the ping come? When you when you set it down, you if listen closely because there was there was a ping. Oh. So you're listening for it when you're pulling it out of the water. Set them down anywhere from five minutes to half an hour. If you mm -hmm. haven't heard the ping in half an hour, chances are in jar five. And I heard one ping. <laughs> Is there a way to tell if it's sealed without yes, hearing that ping? I heard one ping. Yes, ma'am. Uh, once your jars cool, it's recommended that you uh, let them sit on the countertop undisturbed 12 to 24 hours. After uh, 24 hours, you and there's a little uh, a little button. If you press your fin your index finger down on that button, and it does not um, it, it does not depress. Mm -hmm. you know that your jar is sealed. But if you press your finger and that little button pops back up. Mm -hmm. It hasn't processed. And you'll know <laughs> because when you unscrew it, when you unscrew the screw band and try to lift up the uh, lid, the lid, will, it'll come off with no um, resistance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if it's sealed, 
it will not come up. You can lift that whole jar by the lid and the lid will not come up. But just take your index finger, press it down on the little button in the center. If that button doesn't come back up, you know you're good to go. I'm laughing at Mike. He said he said he looked up that pressure canner looked like a submarine or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got this pressure gauge. Yeah, it's pressure canning is intense. It's, it's a whole nother thing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for walking us through that process. Uh, we really appreciate it. And it's so timely because we really have to be, um, you know, kind of taking it to the next level when we can in terms of, you know, our food preservation and our, and our growing. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, is there any, um, any, any questions uh, before we get off the before we get off the line, uh, that was a great, great presentation right in your own kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. And once, um, I'm, I'm still going to try to figure out why the um, edits didn't process or maybe when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> it will have processed and then I will put the, um, the uh, revised edited version of this workshop on uh, the YouTube channel. So it'll be available for every, everyone. And then I'll be putting some more up now that T has walked. And thank you so much. Thank you, Mama T, for walking <laughs> me through that tech process. I think I'm going to be a YouTube rock star. <laughs> We all going to be experts by the time this thing is over. Exactly. I'm like, come back to the real world. This digital world is just fine. <laughs> no, no. no. I, no. Just kidding. Just I'm kidding. still trying to figure out how I am going to manage once winter comes and I cannot get in the garden. Cause I know. Yeah. I know. I'm getting a little nervous as the weather is... Right. Um, it's getting you know chilly or something and i see those lines outside some of the stores and i'm like oh people are gonna be standing in lines in the winter and crazy yeah we you know we're gonna see we're gonna see how this all shakes out but everybody is saying thank you and uh kimberly says um uh, going back to the basics yeah, that's yep. right that's right yep. and yep. uh you know what can you go back up uh, mike had a question about using a pressure canner as a water bath canner and i didn't uh, get an opportunity to see the entire question. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, if you uh, use your cursor, you can scroll up on yours. It says, uh, let's see, it says, I have an instant pot and I have uh, okay. seen a couple of sources um, say using it as a hot bath steamer. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of using an instant instant pot for a hot bath steamer? Mm. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you know what? Some things I'm just really old school about. Yeah. And that and also I'm 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 still learning, you know. Um, uh, but no, I've not heard that, but now that it's been brought up, I will do some, you know, some research. What about the dishwasher? Uh definitely <laughs> I'm not no, You're not I, entertaining it. I don't, I don't even use my dishwasher to wash dishes, so I'm certainly not gonna use it to can my food. No. <laughs> oh, and and Miss Betty says she, you know, she she learned a few things, and she's um Betty, and she's an experienced uh, canner, so that's awesome. Oh, thank you so much. Yep, and we love you too. Is that Mama Shakira? Thank you, Mama. Thank you for being here. Yay. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time. I don't think there's any questions. You were thorough, well, on you. point. Thank you so much. I was, yeah, I, I, I was just a little anxious because the edit version didn't work, but I think we worked it out. Thank we you. worked it. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, uh, for all of you on the, still on the line, I mentioned that I'll email you the recipe, um, the link to the, um, to the video that we just watched if you want to watch it again. And um, I'll email you the, um, the, uh, a couple of just canning 
handouts that we had from uh, Keep Growing Detroit. So love you all and hope you guys are going to jump back outside for a little bit to enjoy this weather. I'm going to put my email. So if anybody has any questions or looking for some recipes, just drop me a line. Nice. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Thank you for being here. (laughs) All right, guys, you take it easy. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Mom. I appreciate you. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.